Hello students, welcome again to our year 9 chemistry lesson and today our subtopic of discussion will be on the active part of the air. The active part of the air. Now, don't forget that uh, we have been looking at the atmosphere. We looked at the composition of the atmosphere where we have gases such as nitrogen at 78%, oxygen between 20 21%, carbon four oxide 0.03%, argon 0.9%, and many other particles, dust particles, the pollen grains, water vapor, and the other inert gases. That makes the whole atmosphere to be a mixture. Now, from there, we also look at some of the uses of the gas in the atmosphere. We looked at the uses of uh, nitrogen, we looked at the uses of oxygen, and so on and so forth. And then we also discussed the process of fractional distillation, the separation of the different components of the atmosphere. But then it is also important for us to remind ourselves that out of the gases in the atmosphere, we have a, we have a part of the atmosphere that has what we call the active part of the air, or the active part of the atmosphere. And in that case, specifically, we shall be looking at the reactions involving oxygen. Now, the objective of our lesson today is that at the end of the lesson, we should be in a position to explain the active part of air using reactions that involve corrosion using reactions which involve corrosion. That means explaining oxygen as the active part of air. But in this case, we shall be focusing on the use of the corrosion actions, uh, reactions, to show how corrosion will only take place in the presence of oxygen and not in the presence of the rest of the gases. Now, to start with, let's mention about the oxygen being the part that is the active part of the atmosphere. Because of this, it normally takes part in very many chemical reactions within the environment. Oxygen being the active part of the air, uh, it has a greater impact on the different chemical reactions that take place within the environment. And that is either directly or indirectly Let's look at what you call the corrosion reactions. Corrosion reactions, reactions that involve what you call corrosion. Now, a corrosion reaction is a natural process which normally leads to the gradual destruction of a metallic surface. Natural process that results into gradual destruction of metallic surfaces due to the chemical reactions within the environment. Now, maybe we dissect that again into small sections to understand that statement. We are looking at uh, corrosion being a natural process. We do not set up apparatus for corrosion to take place. As long as the conditions are favorable within a given environment, then corrosion will take place. That's why it is natural. We don't prepare it. It just takes place naturally. Then the second part we need to look at that statement is gradual destruction. The entire reaction involving corrosion is not sudden. It doesn't just occur at once. It takes place gradually. Case example, if you had to look at the, your iron sheets, the roofing on your houses, and you made business to stand there every day to see when the rust will start appearing, you will definitely get tired. Because it's not something that will just take place in a day. It normally occurs very gradually, very slowly. You know, that is what normally takes place. And then this particular destruction is taking place on the surface. It is not inside. 
it begins on the surface, then when this particular metallic material is continuously exposed to the environment, that particular destruction moves deeper into the metallic material. So it first begins on the surface, then digs deeper into the material as it continues destroying the material. So when you talk about the corrosion, we are looking at a, a natural process, we are looking at a gradual destruction, then we are looking at a reaction taking place on the surface of the metallic reaction, uh, surface, and this is mostly due to the chemical reactions in the environment. Now, this mostly occurs in the metal surfaces, which are made of iron. When you talk about corrosion, the iron as a metal comes into focus, which means that when you're talking about corrosion, then we mostly refer to corrosion with relationship to iron. When this iron is left in the air, that is, you leave, leave it in the air, whether accidentally or intentionally, it gets into contact with the oxygen and the water vapor or the moisture in the atmosphere. When you leave the uh, iron material in the open, remember that in the atmosphere we have water vapor. In the same atmosphere we have oxygen. Two components which are very important for corrosion to take place. So when these two when these two are available in the atmosphere, then iron is left very open in the, in the I mean very much in the open. Automatically, this particular ion, the surface of iron, will be corroded. Starting from the, the upper part, and this particular metallic ion is continuously left in the atmosphere, the corrosion will spread deeper into the metallic material. Maybe some of us are wondering. Iron, what does it mean, iron? What is this particular metal known as iron? Some parts of the vehicle are made of iron. So it means that if you leave the vehicle outside, you're actually exposing the iron. And automatically, if you look at even our vehicles, if you go underneath, you'll find that the parts where rusting will be taking place. Right below, if you look at it, you'll see the process of rusting taking place. That is the corrosion we're talking about. So it's not that you go to the house, pick the iron, place it out there. No, we are looking at the substances which are made of iron, metallic materials made of iron that can be left there in the open. Now, this gradual destruction leads to what we call the rusting of iron. That gradual destruction, that gradual corrosion reaction normally leads to what we call the rusting of iron, which is generally a very slow process and can take a very long time. So when we are talking about corrosion, in a nutshell we are actually talking about rusting. And we are saying that this rusting takes place very slowly over a very long period of time. That's why at the beginning I challenged you that if you are to continuously look at the surface of the roof from the houses, and see when the rust will appear, you will get tired looking at those particular surfaces. Why? Because it doesn't happen within a day or two. It normally takes place very gradually for the entire metallic surface to be covered by the rust. Now, when the iron rusts in air, there is a formation of what you call a brown coating. There will be a brown coating which normally collects on the surface of the metal. This brown substance of the brown coating is known as rust. That brown coating which happens or which appears on the surface of an iron or um, um, an iron sub uh, surface is known as rust. But in chemistry, rust is known as hydrated iron free oxide. Hydrated iron three oxide. So the chemical name of rust is hydrated iron three oxide. They can ask you that in the exams. They can ask you that in the exams. Um, that is the, the chemical name for rust. Now, if they also ask you to state the observation made 
when an iron surface is left exposed to the atmosphere for a particular duration, then the observation will be a brown coating or a brown layer or a brown substance. The color must be stated because that is the observation. You know, a brown coating forms on the surface of the iron. Then we can ask you to name that particular brown coating. The name is a hydrated iron three oxide. Rust, remember, rust is the common name and we don't normally use it when it comes to chemical naming of um, the reaction of corrosion. So we normally use hydrated iron three oxide. So basically that's how the entire process of rusting takes place. That you expose this iron material to the atmosphere, it gets into contact with the moisture and the oxygen, then once it gets into contact, then the gradual process of corrosion starts taking place, and the final part of this particular process of reaction uh, results when a brown coating develops on the surface, which is known as hydrated iron 3 oxide. Now, let's look at the different aspects of corrosion, the advantages and disadvantages in our second segment. See you then.